Hey everyone, it's your math tutor. Today we're talking about inverse functions. We'll do a quick overview on the definition of an inverse and a problem on inverse relations. Then we'll do a couple examples like these where we're actually finding the inverse of a function. Let's go. All right, let's first go over what the inverse of a function even means. In general, a function is something where you can plug in an input like x, do something with that number, and then we'll get an output, which is a different value we'll call y. Now the inverse of a function means you are swapping the x and the y, and now this is the inverse. So if you take a function like y equals x plus 1, then the inverse is just x equals y plus 1, but you have to solve for y and there's different notation, but yeah, that's basically what it is. Just swapping the x and the y in a function. For these inverse problems, sometimes your teacher will ask you to flat out find the inverse of a function, or they might write it like this, where you need to find the inverse of the function f of x, and it's written like this with the little negative one at the top. Either way, both mean inverse. Our first problem asks us to find the inverse of the relation. It doesn't look like your typical problem, but let's think through it. This is a relation. It's just a set of points. And if we were to graph it, it's just like negative one, zero. And this is a point where negative one is the x value and zero is the y value. It's just a point. And now remember when we said that the inverse is just when you swap the x and the y. So to find the inverse of this point, we're just going to swap x and y, which is now 0, negative 1, where 0 is the new x value and negative 1 is the new y value. This is the inverse. So now to find the inverse of the relation, which is the set of points, we're just going to do the same thing just with all the other points. So for point 2, 3, we're going to swap x and y and get 3, 2. For 5, negative 2, we'll swap and get negative 2, 5. And for negative 4, 1, we'll get 1, negative 4. And that's it. This is the inverse of the original relation. All right, let's start finding the inverse of functions now. We need to find the inverse of this function, f of x equals 2x plus 1. Remember the notation, this little negative 1 just means the inverse of the function called f of x. The first thing you want to do to find the inverse is replace the f of x with a y. It just makes the next couple steps a little bit easier. And now we have y equals 2x plus 1. For a second step, it's to actually do the inverse part and swap the x and the y. So we're going to replace this y with an x and replace this x with a y. We'll end up with x equals 2y plus 1. This next step can sometimes be the hardest or take the longest. You need to solve for the new y which means get y alone on one side of the equation and all of the other stuff on the other side. In this case, it's not too bad. In order to solve for y, you need to undo everything that's being done to y. Okay, so this is our y, right? To get it alone, we need to undo the plus one by doing the opposite and subtract one. Everything we do to one side, we need to do to the other. Now we have x minus 1 equals 2y. Now we just have this 2 times y. In order to undo that, we need to do the opposite of 2 times y and divide by 2 on both sides. We're almost done. We now have x minus 1 divided by 2 equals y. Our final step is to put it back into function notation. We need to replace this new y with the inverse of f of x. Definitely don't forget this inverse part because it's not the original function f of x we started off with, it's the inverse. So for our final answer, we have that the inverse of f of x is x minus 1 over 2. 
Let's try another example. Our first step again is to replace the f of x with a y. Easy. The second step is to swap the x and the y. This is the inverse part. Still not too bad. Now our next part is the harder part. We have to solve for the new y, which is inside the square root. How do we do this? We treat it like any other equation and isolate y by undoing everything that's being done to it. So this is our y, right? The whole right side of the equation is trapped under the square root. So in order to undo the square root, we can square it. Now remember everything we have to do one side, we have to do to the other. So let's square the left side also. And now we have x squared equals y plus three. And now you can see we're almost there. Y is almost by itself except for this plus three. And in order to undo that plus three, we need to do the opposite and minus three from both sides, of course. And we'll end up with x squared minus 3 equals y, which is pretty much our answer. Our last step is just to put it back into the correct notation by replacing this new y with the inverse of f of x. This is our answer. The inverse of f of x is x squared minus 3. Next problem, let's find the inverse of this expression. Again, let's first replace the f of x with the y. Now let's swap the x and the y. Next, we need to solve for the new y. So we need to isolate y by undoing everything that's being done to it. This is our y, right? Sort of like our last problem, you'll notice that the y is stuck inside the squared part. And to undo it, we need to do the opposite of a square, which is a square root. And let's do it to both sides. Now I did want to point out that when you take the square root of a number, you have to add the plus or minus sign. If this doesn't really make sense to you, pause here to read the explanation and hopefully that helps. But anyways, the plus or minus means that there are actually two solutions that we need to account for, positive x and negative x. So now we have plus or minus the square root of x equals y minus five. We're almost there isolating except for this minus five. So to get rid of it, we need to add five to both sides. And finally, let's replace the y with the inverse of f of x, and this is our answer. The inverse of f of x is plus or minus the square root of x plus 5. We made it to our last problem. Let's do this. It looks a little intimidating, but we can actually still take the same steps. The first step is the same. It doesn't really matter if we're calling the function f of x, g of x, I don't know, q of x. It's just a different name for a function. And in our case, the name of our function is just g of x. So let's replace g of x with y. Next step is to swap the x and y. And now we still need to isolate y by undoing everything that's being done to it. The entire right side is trapped in this cube root, so we need to do the opposite, which is cubing both sides. We'll have x cubed equals y plus 7 over 2. Now to isolate y, notice that the whole expression on the right side is being divided by 2, 
So let's do the opposite and multiply by two on both sides. Finally, to get rid of the plus seven, we can minus seven from both sides. And we'll end up with two x cubed minus seven equals y. For the final step, let's replace y with the inverse of g of x. Now don't forget that the original function was called g of x, not f of x. You might lose easy points here. And this is our final answer. All right, thanks everyone for watching. Comment down below if this helped or if you want me to cover any other topics. And good luck on any homework assignments, quizzes, or tests coming up. You got it.